Okay, good morning class. Moving on, section 6.3, we're going to talk more in depth about separation of variables. Now, the separation of variable problems are going to get a bit more interesting than the previous sections. So, if you have an equation in which the derivative of a function is equal to the mother function, you can find the original function by integrating. And we've been doing that for a while. If I give you a derivative, you can find the original function. And today, we're also going to be giving you some initial value. And that y of 1 equal 5 will allow us to find a constant. So let's see what we can do for this example. And I, I always um, start recommending, if you want to pause uh, the video, do a little bit of work, and then come back and check to see what I'm doing. So, separation of variables. I'm going to multiply both sides by dx. I want to get a dx on the right. So I multiply both sides by dx. dx, however, it, uh, needs to be over here as well. So I'm going to divide by x. That is separate. I'm done. I don't need to move to 3 over here. There's no y value or y variable, so I'm good. That's separation of variable. I'm going to integrate. And yes, there is a 1 here, so uh, technically I'm integrating 1 dy. And the antiderivative of 1 dy would be y. Remember, there's a constant. As soon as I integrate, I do get a constant, which I'm not writing, because I'm going to integrate on this side, and I'm going to put the constant over here. I see the variable in the denominator, which will tell me that this is a natural log, absolute value of x plus that constant c. Again, I do have a constant on this side that I'm not writing because I'm going to move it over there and have the constant. Okay, so that is what we call the general solution. That's not what we're looking for, but the general solution. Sometimes we do ask you for the general solution. So let's continue. I am given a point, and the ordered pair that was given was 1, 5, when x is 1, the y is 5, when x is 1, the y is 5, and that will allow me 5 equal, much log of 1, to find the constant. Natural log of 1 is 0, times 3 is 0, I'm getting 5 to be my constant, which means that the exact solution, or the function, is y equal 3, natural log, absolute value of x, plus 5. Okay, uh, I paused there for a few minutes, I had to deal with something again. Okay, I'm back, let's try it again. Uh, so we found the equation y equal to that, with the constant that we found 5. Number 2. Again, we need to separate variables. Now on this one, we're just looking for the general solution. So I'm not going to have to find a constant. As a matter of fact, I even have the point that will allow me to find a constant. So to separate variables, uh, let me see that minus 3x squared y. I'm going to add it to the other side. I'm going to move it over. So I get dy dx equal. Remember, I'm adding it to the 0. And now continue with separation of variables. We always like to move the dx on this side. It is not a fraction, but yeah, you're multiplying by dx. Okay. So I have the dx and I have x's. Uh, that y is on the wrong side. I got to bring the y to this side. So I have to divide by y. So I'm dividing by y. I'm dividing by y. And when I write on this side, I do have 1 over y dy. And on this side, I get 3x squared dx. So I'm able to separate my variables. y is on the left, 
x is on the right, which will then allow me to integrate. This is 1 over y, and whenever the variable is in the denominator, that is a natural log. So I'm going to have natural log, absolute value of y, equal, power rule, add and divide, with my constant c. Now, that I need to be able to solve for the y, to get the y alone. Now, this is going to be a lot of algebra. So, if you need to pause for a, a, any part of the video, pause it and then come back. Make sure you agree. I have natural log absolute value of y equal to x cubed plus c. The natural log, I'm trying to get rid of the natural log, and I can do that by doing some E stuff. Now, the E stuff that you did last year in pre-calc, I know pre-calc teachers do it a little bit different. If you remember, there is a base of E here. And I'm going to consider all this as a group. Okay, sorry, I'm dealing with stuff here, and I'm trying to record it at the same time. So the breaks are uh, actually me pausing the video and starting up again. Continue. The natural log has a base of E. So I'm going to do this little thing that we learned sometime a long time ago. The base, that's the exponent, and that's equal to that. I have E being raised to all of that, and that should equal to the absolute value of Y. That is an exponent. That's the exponent. E is being raised to the x cubed plus c. Now, some magic. E to a sum. That's a sum you're adding. I can write it as e to the x cubed times e to the c. And normally at school, I would give you a flashback. Can I give you a flashback right now? Uh, let me squeeze it in here. When you're multiplying a, let's do x to the a times x to the b, that is equal to x to a plus b, a sum. And so what I'm actually doing is going backwards. If I give you this, we could write it as that. And the reason why we do that is because e is a number being raised to a number. So e to a constant is a constant. e to the x cubed. So doing the little bit of magic will let me change this into just a constant. All right. More magic. Absolute value of y equal to some constant e to that. And I can get rid of the absolute value of y as long as I have a plus or minus constant e to the x cubed. Now, again, another flashback from a long time ago. Uh, another flashback here. If I have the absolute value of x, that could equal to x or the opposite of x. So when I take the absolute value of x, I could have a positive x or a negative x or opposite of x. So that will allow me to get that plus and minus there. And even more stuff, plus constant minus a constant is a constant. So I'm able to go from absolute value of y equal to this to just y equal to that. Some of these problems are going to come up in the homework. I know there's going to be questions. We'll deal with them as they come. All right, I'm going to continue. Number three, find an equation of the curve given the point whose slope 
at that point or at any point is four times the x coordinate. So I need to translate that. They didn't give me anything about a differential equation. So I'm going to write my own differential equation. Slope. Well, I know what that means. Derivative, right? At any point is, the word is means equal, four times the x coordinate. The slope at any point is four times the x coordinate. I wrote my own differential equation, which will allow me then to solve that. And I recommend you pause. You do a little bit of work on your own and then come back to make sure we did this correct. Okay, integrate. That's the general solution. I am given a point at the point one, two. I can find the constant two equal. 2 plus C. Uh, I'm plugging in the 1 and the 2 there. I'm plugging in the 1 and the 2. So I'm getting my constant to be 0, which means that my equation will be 2x squared plus 0. And that's my equation. Okay. Next one, number 4. All right, let's continue. We have to separate variables. It looks like they're getting a little bit more interesting. I am given a point. And so I'm gonna find a particular solution and then they're asking me to find y of four. So once I find the equation, I'm gonna plug in a four at the end. All we start by writing that dy dx So I'll start separation of variables. And when I start separation of variables, I'm going to multiply by dx or move the dx to the other side. I'm going to have to multiply by y squared. Uh, so I'm going to do that right now. Again, I move the dx to the right. I multiply by y squared to this side. And so separation of variables right there. If you learn more time, I will talk about the AP exam where they want to see the separation of variables, but that's a whole other story. Separate variables. Integrate. On the left is the power rule, add and divide. On the, ooh, I gotta talk, talk about the right, don't I? Um, I need a use substitution there, don't I? So think about that stuff inside of the radical as my U which means I have a 2dx, which means I'm going to have a 1 half. And with that 1 half, uh, then I really have a 1 half integral square root of u. So I'll write it a 1 half. That's my, I haven't integrated. I just rewrote that to u, which will allow me to integrate that to be add 1, uh, 3 halves, and then I multiply, well, divide by 3 halves, which means I'm really multiplying by 2 thirds, and then I do have that 1 half in the front, and I'm writing kind of small, let me kind of make that a 1 third, u to the 3 halves, and I'm going to bring back my x's there, There it is. So that is the general solution. I have not found the, the constant yet. Oh, I'm going to give myself a little bit of space. I know the point was 0, 3. So I'm going to plug in the point 0, 3 up here. So at the point 0, 3, I got to find the constant. So let me do a little bit of algebra here. One third. 
y cubed. That's 27, but oh well. I have a one third. X is zero. And I have to raise that to the three halves plus my constants. So I will do a little bit of magic or a little bit of algebra. And I figured out my constant to be 26 over 3. Which means my equation is, I'm forgetting that one third. My equation is 1 third y cubed equal 1 third 2x plus 1 to the 3 halves plus the constant that I just calculated to be 26 over 3. Now, we're not done. Find an equation for y in terms of x. I need to be able to get the y alone. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. I have a one-third. I can multiply everything by three. And if I multiply everything by three, multiply by three, multiply by three, multiply by three, I get that function. So I'm going to stop right there. I know they wanted me to plug in a y equal four or x equal four. Um, I would have to plug in a 4 there, 8, 9, some algebra, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to move on. Number 5. Find the general solution. General. So that's nice. I don't have to find a constant. So I'm going to start with, uh, I guess, move the dx over there. I strongly suggest you pause. Try it. And then come back. I have x over here, which I'm going to divide by that parentheses to bring them here. I have a y over here, which means I have to divide by y to bring it over here. So two steps. Divide both sides by y. So y. Divide both sides by that parentheses. And I'm able to separate variables. Continue. Now I'm going to enter it. On this side, that variable in the denominator tells me it's going to be a natural log. On this side, variable in the denominator, ooh, but that's a function there. I will need a use of tuition again. Look at that. You should notice that the derivative is kind of there. And we are, should all be experts at this by now. One half du. So when you integrate that, you're going to have a one-half in there somewhere. Natural log. X squared plus 4. I just skip some steps. Uh, make sure you're able to get to there. Well, one more thing. My constant. Two more things. My constant there. And I dropped the absolute value bars on the natural log here. Not over there. But here I did. And I did that because uh, this will be positive, add 4 will be positive. I know this expression will be a positive value. I don't need to worry about the absolute value. Okay. I'm going to continue that. Magic stuff again. And let me bring that one half up there, kind of clean it up a little bit. I guess I should write it as square root, huh? But is really a one-half power. How we proceed here, there's a couple different ways of doing it. This is a plus sign. 
So I have to be able to somehow combine all this stuff here on the right hand side. This is a natural log and that's not a natural log. So I'm going to think about that C as a natural log. And I'm doing that because I want to be able to combine that. Now let me make sure everybody agrees with that. Natural log of E to the constant is that constant. I'm able to write the constant as that. Natural log of E to a constant is a constant. Again, I'm doing that because a plus sign for natural log will allow me to multiply those. Both of the properties from pre-calc of last year, the natural log plus another natural log, I'm going to multiply those. I could combine those as natural log of a product. That times that. That times that. And speaking of that, this is just a constant. I'll deal with that in a bit. On the left, I have that. Next thing, natural log of stuff equal natural log of other stuff. Natural log equal natural log. This stuff will equal to that stuff. Natural log of that stuff equal natural log of that stuff. I put them equal to each other. Again, more properties from last year. One more thing I'm going to do. This e to the c is a constant. That's all it is. It's a constant. So that allowed me to write it as constant. And then I still have this. Natural log, sorry, absolute value of y equal constant. I can actually solve for the y because the y will equal to plus or minus a constant. And that plus or minus a constant is just another constant. So I don't even need to write that plus and minus. Later on, that plus and minus, well, let me kind of go up here. Later on, that plus and minus will be important when we ask you to find the particular solution. We need to be careful if it's going to be a positive or a negative. So that will be the final answer. All right. Uh, it looks like we have another example to do. And normally on... Um, the next example, I will have you do it. Ooh, where to go? I would have you do it in class. It is a bit of a beast to separate those variables, so I'm not even going to do it right now. Um, I'll let you do that one on your own. I will, however, give you your homework. Five thirty-one odd. Uh, we are going to set up a Zoom conference because I know there's going to be questions here on the homework. I know, and uh, I want to talk to you guys about other stuff, but uh, I will schedule something sometime uh, this week. Okay. Bye bye.